Welcome back, everybody. We are live here at Comic-Con. I am with the team of Crimson Peak. Thank you very much. Look at these beautiful people. The crowd was, of course, going insane once again. I got to talk about this movie now. A lot has been said about the tone and sort of the inspiration of two genuinely my favorite books from childhood, two of them, um, Rebecca and yes. Movies and yes. Jane Eyre. Yes. Here's what I love about what I'm making up about Mia's character, which is that she not only stands in as one of those heroines, but also sort of for me as the audience, as someone that loves the ghoulish, because yes. she seems to love ghosts, but she's almost destroyed by her own gift. Yes. Am I making many things up? <laughs> Uh, me personally? Or yeah. Character? Your character. Okay, yeah, no, I do. I <laughs> didn't plan to end up in a lot of gothic films, but I somehow am drawn to them. And, you know, they present a lot of really interesting characters. So. Tom, there's something so devouring about the way that you kiss her in that trailer. I'm like, are these siblings even human or are they just entities after her gift? You don't have to say, but what's sort of the, what is sort of the conflict between your love and your sister? It's all character, I think. Yeah, it's, it's um, I, th I think the most uh, fascinating thing about, about, um, <laughs> That's going to make it super tough. <laughs> Thank you, Guillermo. Um, the most fascinating thing about uh, Thomas Sharp is that he's, he's, there's a tension between uh, the past and the future for him. And he is a very open-hearted, um, energetic, curious man who, who, who goes to the new world looking for inspiration and, and investment because he's an inventor, an engineer. And... I think he's surprised by the the ardor and passion that he feels for Edith. It's instant. It's it's immediate. It's it's uh, it's almost love at first sight, and it's incredibly romantic. Um, and I think uh, he, you know he's very dark, very dark. You know he's a man with a with a dark history, and I think um, his responsibility for his past catches up with him, and he has some tough questions to face. And um, but his his passion and, and his love for Edith is sincere, I think, and surprising. Jessica, there is this very uh, common horror trope, but it's a great one. I'm going to try. I'm going to have to shout. <laughs> All doors are open to you except the ones that are locked. And so you kind of hold the keys to the kingdom, it seems. Do you think you're trying to protect Edith or shove her right into the danger? I think that's the big question of the film. Uh, she's, you know, I play Tom's hovering sister, and um, the more he becomes obsessed with Edith, it, the more it frightens her. So we don't know if she's going to take Edith under her wing and protect her, or if she's going to manipulate the situation for her own advantage. And she is the king of the castle, per se, because she's the one who holds the keys to the castle. There's a twist mid-movie, is my understanding, that sort of turns everything around. Mm -hmm. Have we seen sort of hints about that in the trailer so far? Are you holding that back? No, I think that the movie is not a movie with a twist ending. It, it doesn't have a twist ending. It's a proper, lavish, gorgeous, gothic romance. And uh, you've seen some hints of uh, the reveals of the plot on the trailers. But I think that uh, we do, uh, I hope, a good job at keeping it romantic and very scary at the same time. And there's this interplay, like Tom was saying, I think between, even in the trailer you can see it, technology and sort yes, of the... You're absolutely right. The movie comes in in 1901, exactly at the moment when America is a modern electrified country, a modern girl, and then uh, in a way Lucille represents a much older set of values in a very twisted way, powerful way, but uh, the way she views love is possessive in a different way, and, and then Mia's love is uh, different, uh, uh, rather um, Edith's, is very different. So it's a, it's a movie, if I say it's a, a really spooky movie, but a really a human movie, uh, I would be describing the way I feel about it. Tom, we're obviously here at Comic-Con, the crowd is going a bit wild. We did take to Twitter and got some Twitter questions for you. There they are. <laughs> say 
Loki is by far the most successful Marvel villain, and I'm curious if you have sort of a take on that and why that is and why he's so beloved. Um, you know, it's 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 a source of constant amazement for me. Um, you know, I, I think it's every actors dream of playing complex characters who are who are full of um, charisma and sophistication and, and depth and. I, I don't, I can't explain it. it. I mean, it might be to do with, you know, of all the things that he, he's called, he's called the God of Mischief. And I think there's something very appealing about mischief. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's sort of, uh, it seems innocent. It's fun and it's wicked and, and, and there's a delight in creating chaos. I think everyone can relate to that. But honestly, I continue to be amazed and flattered well, now that he's gotten everything he wants and he's taken his father's throne, will he be satisfied in Ragnarok or up to more mischief yet? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think uh, he's on the throne now, and I'm pretty sure in his mind the trains are running on time <laughs> and the streets are clean. Um, I truly don't know. I mean, I'm excited to see what the next chapter is. Um, it's actually been a long time since I've played him. Um, because uh, I've been busy doing other things, and, and that's been exciting for me. Um, but we'll just have to see. We'll, we'll, it, it's all coming around, so we'll see at some point. Thank you guys so much. I know we wanted to talk to you, too, about Silent Hills. We're so sad about that oh, around yeah, here. Oh, yeah, me too. Man. Yeah, was it no going to be first-person shooter? I mean, not it, it was going to be. Person. I mean, it's, uh, it was, what we were planning was amazing, but, you know, life is like that. Yeah. You gain weight, you lose video games. All right, well, it's been an amazing Comic-Con. I can't even speak anymore, but thank you guys so much for being my final interview of the day. It's been lovely. Looking forward to the movie. Go party. I am going to party so hard now. Back to Damon on the stage, and thank you guys for an amazing Comic-Con. IGN Live at Comic-Con is presented by Marvel's Ant-Man in theaters July 17th and the all-new LGG4. See the great, feel the great.